internet. It's Wizard of Oz time. The wonderful Wizard of Oz. And tonight we're on chapter 21. We're so close to the end. I just realized you can't really see my face. I need to turn on the light. Ah, and now you just got a real close-up up my nose. Do I have any boogers? I don't know. Comment down below if I have boogers. I don't know. I think that's one of those things you're supposed to say. You're supposed to tell like and comment and stuff. Hey, um, I got two of the munchkins with me tonight. Hello. Hello, Internet. Hello. And there's my wife. She's beautiful. <laughs> but the third munchkin, the, the biggest munchkin, the tallest of the munchkin uh, trio is, is at Grandma's tonight. So, mm, lucky her. Anyway, tonight is chapter 21 of 24. Which means, let's see, tonight 21, tomorrow 22, Tuesday 23, Wednesday night we'll get to chapter 24 and that's the end of the book. And chapter 24 is like a paragraph long, so we may even start book 2. I don't know. Maybe I'll go nuts. We'll see. But this is chapter 21. The lion becomes the king of the beasts. It's going to be exciting. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's read. After climbing down from the China Wall, the travelers found themselves in a disagreeable country, full of bogs and marshes and covered with tall, rank grass. It was difficult to walk without falling into muddy holes, for the grass was so thick that it hid them from sight. However, by carefully picking their way, they got safely along until they reached solid ground. But here, the country seemed wilder than ever, and after a long and tiresome walk through the underbrush, they entered another forest where the trees were bigger and older than any they had ever seen. This forest is poisonous and whiteful, declared the lion, looking around him with joy. Never have I seen a more beautiful place. It seems gloomy, said the scarecrow. Not a bit of it, answered the lion. I should like to with him all of my wife. See how soft and wide weaves are under your feet. And how witch and green the moss is that clings to these old trees. Sure, we no wild beast could wish a pleasanter home. Perhaps there are wild beasts in the forest now, said Dorothy. I suppose there are, returned the lion, but I do not see any of them about. They walked through the forest until it became too dark to go any farther. Dorothy and Toto and the lion lay down to sleep, while the tin woodman and the scarecrow kept watch over them as usual. When morning came, they started again. Before they had gone far, they heard a low rumble, as if as of the growling of many wild animals. Toto whimpered a little, but none of the others were frightened, and they kept, and they kept along the well-trodden path until they came to an opening in the wood in which were gathered hundreds of beasts of every variety. There were tigers and elephants and bears and wolves and foxes and all the others in the natural history, and for a moment Dorothy was afraid. But the lion exclaimed that the animals were holding a meeting, and he judged by their snarling and growling that they were in great trouble. As he spoke, several of the beasts caught sight of him, and at once the great assemblage hushed as if by magic. The biggest of the tigers came up to the lion and bowed, saying, Welcome, O oh king of beasts. You have come in a good time to fight our enemy and bring peace to all the animals of the forest once more. What is your trouble? asked the lion quietly. We are all threatened, answered the tiger, by a fierce enemy which has lately come into this forest. It is a most tremendous monster, like a great spider, with a body as big as an elephant and legs as long as a tree trunk. It has eight of these long legs, and as the monster crawls through the forest, he seizes an animal with a leg, drags it to his mouth, where he eats it as a spider does a fly. Not one of us is safe while this fierce creature is alive. We had called a meeting to decide how to take care of ourselves when you came among us. The lion thought for a moment. Are there any other lions in this forest? He asked. No, there were some, but the monsters eaten them all. Besides, they were none of them nearly so large and brave as you. If I put it into your enemy, 
Will you bow down to me and obey me as king of the forest? inquired the lion. <laughs> we will do that gladly, returned the tiger, and all the other beasts roared with a mighty roar. We will. Where is this great spider of yours now? asked the lion. Yonder among the oak trees, said the tiger, pointing with his forefoot. Take good care of these friends of mine, said the lion, and I will go at once to fight the monster. He bade his comrades goodbye and marched proudly away to do battle with the enemy. The great spider was lying asleep when the lion found him, and it looked so ugly that its foe turned up his nose in disgust. Its legs were quite as long as the tiger had said, and its body was covered with coarse black hair. It had a great mouth with a row of sharp teeth a foot long, but its head was joined to the pudgy body by a neck as slender as a wasp's waist. This gave the lion a hint of the best way to attack the creature, and as he knew it was easier to fight it asleep than awake, he gave a great spring, landed directly upon the monster's back. Then, with one blow of his heavy paw, all armed with sharp claws, he knocked the spider's head from its body. Jumping down, he watched it until its long legs stopped wiggling, when he knew it was quite dead. The lion went back to the opening where the beasts of the forest were waiting for him and said proudly, You need fear your enemy no longer. Then the beast bowed down to the lion as their king, and he promised to come back and rule over them as soon as Dorothy was safely on her way to Kansas. That is the end of chapter 21, The Lion Becomes the King of the Beasts. The next chapter is chapter 22, The Country of the Quadlings. We are so close to finish with this book. I thank everybody for watching, and uh, be sure to come back tomorrow night for chapter 22. Thanks, everybody. Bye.